Hello Makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. If this is your first time here, then it's nice to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us. If you'd like to hear about what happens with art creation and using our art materials in abstract art in particular, yeah, hit that subscribe button below and we'll be sure to drop you a message every single week we drop a video every Friday morning. Now this week, as promised, I want to explore this idea of how can I create a really nice piece of art, maybe minimal, but a nice piece of art in say 10 minutes or less. So the challenge is on and we may have to wait for paint to dry if I'm being totally honest about the timing, but just from a concept standpoint, let's talk a little bit about what we can do here. Now, as I often do when I start any new project, you start with a brand new blank sheet of paper. I'm using my go-to heavy-duty watercolor paper, and I'll put, a, I'll put a listing down below in the description so you guys can pick this up if this is the kind of thing you want to work with. I like it. It's, uh, it's heavy-duty. It's got a little bit of a texture to it, holds the paint nicely, etc. Now, what I'm thinking of doing with this particular piece is almost, again, we're talking about minimal abstract art to a certain degree, and I'm thinking about how can I create almost a sculpture where we have one thing and then maybe something that's on top of it. So if I were looking this at this across the room, I'd say, oh, that's a sculpture. Now, one of the things I'm going to do, because in truth, it feels uncomfortable to just grab a paintbrush and go to town because... And what if I do it wrong, right? So one of the things I feel comfortable doing is I'm going to just take my pencil. I have a, just a cheap mechanical pencil here. And I want to create a bit of an outline to start with to give myself a sense of where I want to put the paint down. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that approach. So I'm going to come in here. And again, I'm almost approaching this as if this were going to be a, a painting I made of a sculpture. So I'm going to say, let's start down here at the bottom and we'll get some sort of a foundation. And again, I kind of like an organic flow to this kind of thing. So I'm going to kind of go up here, maybe a little bit like that, bring it over here, and then maybe make it a little bit wider at the base as well, okay? So, all right, that's kind of a cool effect right away, and not too complicated. Now the next thing I'm going to want to do is probably have something that is maybe balanced on top of it. That's kind of what I'm visualizing. And so I'm going to have a connection here between this top line and something that's really kind of balanced here. And so one of the things I can do is I can kind of just start and pick up my line here. And let's go over here. And again, we don't want to go too high to the top of the piece. But kind of do something like that. Just bring it around. Okay? So I have these two pieces that are going to kind of work together. Now, my own personal philosophy, and this doesn't have to be yours, is that things, uh, abstract art pieces that have odd numbers of objects in them, are visually more interesting to me. Now, if you're working with something that's symmetrical and you have, you know, this box and this box, I get it. But when we're creating organic shapes like this, I find having a third element can really help draw these pieces together. And I'm gonna put something relatively small right into this space here, kind of like a little, little alcove that I made. I'm gonna just kind of just put this in here. I'll just put a, a little bit of a, a dot. Now, in order for this to really work, I'm gonna to have to add some coloring. And so here's the thought. I'm thinking of a kind of a teal blue at the bottom to hold this foundation down a little bit. I might even darken it a little bit. I don't know, we'll see what happens. I wanna put a basic black up here. Again, we're gonna get the contrast between the two colors. And to really make things pop, I wanna put a bright orange right here. Now, is this gonna work? You know, sometimes you never know until you do it. So to get started, um, let's get some paint on the table here. And I am going to be using one of these disposable palettes. By the way, I'll put a listing for this in the description as well. I love these in the sense that you can, uh, you can put a lot of paint on them. They're fairly sizable. And also, when you're done, you just peel it off, toss it if you need to, or reuse it in some meaningful way. So let's start talking about this piece down here, first of all, and what we want to be able to do with it, get that position. And again, I'm using a, uh, a quite literally a teal C uh, color from CraftSmart. And I'll give this a shake just in case, uh, you know, sometimes the paint sits around for a while, they, they start to separate, and that's not gonna make things better for us. And let me get a, a fairly good size of, uh, of blue out here. Now, that color, you know what, I'm gonna go with that color. I don't need to darken it. My thought was initially I might need to. Let's just get some paper towels into action here, because you know me, I love, I love me some paper towels. And uh, now I'm gonna use a, a fairly, uh, standard round over brush here. Okay, it's not going to be a square tip, although I might want that. And one of the things I need to think about when I'm putting these lines down is, is my paint going to be thin enough to give me the fluidity that I want? For example, let me just dip into my blue paint here, and I'm going to start in the middle just to give myself a test. And actually, this paint has some good fluidity. And by that, I mean when I create a line, 
what I'm not getting is a berm that shows up on the edge of the brush. And sometimes when you work with a square brush, for example, you end up with something that's a little bit uh, more of like a, like a plow, a snow plow, if you're familiar with those, uh, just came through and kind of left, uh, left something. And it just creates a line, it creates a ridge. And I don't want that to be what's happening with my piece. So one of the things I want to make sure I do here, and I have, to, I have to dip my head in pretty close here, is I want to kind of just get on the edge of that line. And by the way, it doesn't matter if it's going to be perfect because your paint is going to be covering up your pencil line. And we're just going to come down here, and again, we're going to try to trace the contours of our shape best we can. And we can do it in sections. Let me turn my brush over since I have a little bit more paint on the other side. And let's come down here. Now again, our, the, the concept of the 10-minute masterpiece is not always going to hold true with what we're doing simply because we want to sometimes take our time and make sure we do it right. But conceptually, this will work out very nicely. So let's just get... I'm going to start filling in some of the sections. And again, let me just get up here to the top. And I'm going to cover this line up a little bit as well. And if I have extra paint left over, I'll just spread it down into the white space here. And there we go. And make sure you cover up that pencil line, only because you don't want it peeking out later. Uh, because then you're going to have to figure out some way to erase it. And that's going to be a little bit more challenging as well. Alright, let's get over here. Do the same thing, get, again, get the contours of this shape laid out. It's always funny to me, you know, when, when painting anything, is that, you know, when you draw a shape or put something on, or even, you know, if you're painting a wall, right, if you've ever decided that you want to repaint your home, uh, it, it takes so much longer than you ever think it's going to take, right? It's one of those things you look at that wall like, how long can that wall take me to paint? Ten minutes, and then an hour later you're still, you're still putting paint on it. And that's kind of how it goes. So, there we go. I want to make this as clean as we can, because this is definitely going to affect how people perceive the piece. I'm going to take the wet paint that I have up here, and I'm going to just, again, I'm going to try to spread it around. Now, we can put additional layers of paint on here. We want to kind of smooth it up, and we're going to probably have some areas where it's a little more show through than we want, a little more see through. So I am going to come in here and again, it's going to be easier once it gets closer to where, <laughs> where I'm sitting than at the top of this piece of art. So let's kind of fill all that in. And through the magic of fast forward video, we managed to get through some of the uh, the less exciting parts. But uh, as you can see, we have a fairly nice color here. I like this color. It's going to work really well for what we're doing. Um, I am going to let this level layer dry here. Let me just kind of clean up a little bit down here. I'm going to get let this layer dry, and we're going to have to hit it again just to get a little bit more opa opacity in here. And yeah, we get some of the brush marks out of here, we'll do that. But um, we'll let that happen. Now, in order to make things easier for me, I'm going to take my piece of paper and flip it around. And uh, let's do the same thing here with our black. Now, with our black, let me just get my brush unblued, although it's not going to matter so much for, uh, for what we're doing here with the black, because this will cover up everything. Now, I'm using uh, my, uh, my apple barrel um, from Plaid black paint. This is a, by the way, I love this brand in the sense that you can buy it in big, in big containers like this. These are the 16 fluid ounce containers. Um, it's affordable paint. I'm, I'm sure it's probably, you could probably comment about this, not the best paint in the world because it is fairly affordable. But one of the things about it that, you know, I don't necessarily love natively. Let me see if you guys can see this when I put it out. It's when I drop it here on my palette. It's basically the consistency of uh, like chocolate pudding but it doesn't taste nearly as nice. Uh, please, don't eat your pain. I'm just kidding. Um, but one of the things I can do here, because I do find when I work with this, it's a little thick. 
Now, in order to make my, my black paint less thick, because it's going to leave some lines in, and just, I don't want the texturing of the paintbrush marks or anything like that to be part of this artwork, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use some acrylic matte medium. Now, I have a large bottle here. I bought it. It's fairly affordable stuff. And, and think of it really just as a very thin, um, transparent acrylic paint. It's really just the binder that you would find in acrylic paint without the pigment. And uh, we're going to use it almost like, just think of it almost like putting a couple drops of water. It doesn't have to be an awful lot to thin this out. So I'm going to put it as a separate pile here and I'm just going to kind of stir it into my black as I need it just to just to get this less uh, less thick. So there we go. And you'll start to be able to see as it blends in that it just starts getting wetter and uh, and wetter and that will uh, that will give you the clue you need as to when it's ready to use. So let's just get this in here. If I need to add more, I, I have a big bottle of it. We can do that. So I'm going to start to drag this over. I don't like to necessarily pour it all into my uh, the paint I'm, I'm trying to thin all at once because sometimes you just make a just a poor judgment as to how much you need and sometimes it becomes a lot thinner than you want. And you then have a problem trying to find a way to thicken your paint and that's actually a lot harder than thinning your paint as you might imagine. So we're going to come in here and try to make it a little, a little less gelatinous. That's the goal. Okay, we have something that's a little wetter. We'll, we'll give a, I'll give a try here and see what works. So again, this shape at the top, I want this to be a basic black, so I'm going to kind of start in here. And again, the same process. I'm going to just go over here. I'm going to kiss the line on the edge there. And I'm going to drag it around. And we'll try to follow the contours of our shape. And of course, if we don't like the shape we drew, we can follow different contours. It's really just there as a, as a way to guide us. Let's go down here and do the same thing at the bottom. We're going to come to the contact between the black and the blue. Make that nice and smooth. Good. I think that worked out well. Let's spread this in here. Let's get some more. We have plenty, plenty, plenty. Probably more black paint than we're not going to need, but here we are. Getting there quickly. Now let's see if I can finish this line over here. Okay, getting closer and closer. It's okay to take your time. It is absolutely okay. Again, what we're trying to do here is uh, relax. We're trying to reduce our stress through art, a little art therapy here, and uh, part of that is really just if you just relax and just let every little brush stroke have some meaning, and not have to be I have to finish this. I have to do this. Right? That's that's not why we're here. We're here to create something and enjoy the process of creation. And if we're we're able to create something that we also aesthetically love, that's a huge bonus. But sometimes art is really just about experimenting. It's just trying things out to get a sense if, uh, if this idea we had in our mind is actually going to work or not. Because I'll be honest with you, <laughs> not every idea I've had in my mind has worked. Yeah, I know, it's, it's a shock, but it's absolutely true. I have come up with some poor ideas in, in the past. Uh, and uh, they're all great learning experiences. Right, let me uh, finish this line down here. One more pass. And again, if I need to come in here and uh, maybe use a smaller brush to do a contour cleanup, I will do that as well. Now the nice thing again about the black paint is that once it dries, it dries pretty smooth. I do want to make sure I don't have any kind of lumps in here because you can see that sometimes. But this will become a very, uh, very nice uh, flat black. Now just to take my own advice, I'm going to find a smaller, a smaller brush. And I'm just going to use, again, you might be able to see here, it's a very, it's a square um, brush. But I'm just going to use this more to, uh, to clean up. This is a uh, we'll clean up on aisle five moment here, just make sure get good smooth lines when we're coming around these areas. There's nothing to say you actually couldn't lead with this brush and 
create your contour and then fill it in with your bigger brush as well. There we go. That looks pretty nice. And again, you know, sometimes there's something to be said for the lack of perfection in, in artwork. You know, sometimes it's the, it's the things that, not flaws, but the things that are a little bit more organic. They look like a person created them. And especially as we get closer and closer to uh, the age of AI, where everything is kind of almost a little too precise. It's nice to have those things that have looked, uh, looked like a human being was involved, and it's, uh, it's not absolutely perfect. That said, let me flip my piece of art back around here so I can, again, get back to the blue here. Now, the blue has mostly dried. Again, what I'm going to do, and uh, I'm going to just do this off camera since you don't necessarily need to, mute, need to watch me paint uh, this thing over, but I am going to put another layer on it and try to fill in all the, the, the lighter areas and the brush marks so we have something that's a little bit more uniform. So we'll be back in just a moment, and I'll show you how that turned out. All right, well, as you can see, I put another layer of paint, actually a couple uh, touch-ups here, and have give this piece an opportunity to dry, and it's looking pretty good. It's pretty smooth, and it's pretty opaque, which is what I really was aiming for here, so I'm good with that. Now, the last thing I want to focus on is this little area here, and as I mentioned, I'm going to use a, a brighter color. I'm going to use this actually rather, rather bright, brilliant orange, but I'm also going to tone it down a little bit using uh, some white. Now, I'm going to use the white in this for a couple of reasons. One, I do want to lighten it up just a little bit. This is a little glaring. But second of all, I want to introduce some additional opacity to my paint. As we've talked about in a previous video, and I'll, I'll put it in here somewhere, um, we want to make sure that when we are putting our paint down, again, like we did with the blue, lots and lots and lots of layers is going to take lots and lots and lots of time. And if we can instead come in here and say, let's just make it opaque, because white is really good at blocking everything underneath it. So I'm going to come in here and uh, I'm going to put down a spot of paint here. And it doesn't have to be too much since we're not doing too much in that area. That should be sufficient. And then uh, what I need to do, of course, is I'm going to grab another brush. And I'm going to just use, uh, I'm going to use this small square brush again. And again, I want to come in here and get into my white. And I'm going to just leave a, a little, again, once, once again, I'll kind of a little dollop next to the, my orange here. It doesn't have to be huge amount. That's probably more than I need, but you know, the elegance of dumping things out of a large container, uh, it is what it is. So in this scenario, let me grab a little bit of this white and let me start to mix it in to my orange. And again, I want to bring this down just a little bit, but not too much. I don't want it to be too pale. Sort of there. We're getting something in here. Let's, uh, let's grab a little bit more white. Little scoop. There we go. And as I mentioned, it's going to allow us to tone this down a little bit, but it's also going to knock the opacity or increase the opacity of this paint, which is a big part of what I want to be able to do here as well. Let's grab a little bit more, and I think we should be there. All right. A little mustard pot here. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually wipe my brush off so I have some square edges to work with. Right now it's a little bit, a little globby. All right, and now uh, I'm gonna pull this a little closer to myself again so I can better see it. But let's get some of this paint on my brush. And let's come in here and let's see what happens if we uh, hit that pencil line. Because again, the pencil line is gonna be kind of a problem with, uh, with paints that are Better than ours. Okay, now here's a here's a great example of where we may run into a challenge. It depends if we care about it or not. But as I go over that pencil line, it's it's showing through. It's showing through. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's that's not what I'm looking for. I don't want that pencil line to show up. Um, I like having it there as a guide. That's really the benefit of it for me. But what I'm going to do instead is um, I'm going to do a little little uh, a little first aid here. And I'm going to go and I'm going to go into my glob of white as it were, on my palette. Let me just pick some of the white up. And I'm going to lay the white down first. I'm going to put white on my white. And here's what I want you to notice. When I paint the white over the pencil line, it pretty much vanishes. Okay? Because this white is really good at being opaque. And let's just go around here. Now I'm going to give that just a moment to dry uh, so we don't start smearing the white and the uh, orange together, the yellow together. Uh, so let's give that you know, a couple minutes, and then we'll come back, and let's get that orange on there and see how everything looks. Okay, welcome back. So we've, uh, I've given this just a few minutes to dry. It hasn't taken long at all. And now let's just get, start getting some of our orange paint 
on here. And as, uh, as I said, it's going to be an easier, smoother transition painting on something that's already painted than uh, even painting on my paper. Because my paper does have a bit of a texture. It, does, it, it doesn't always flow as smoothly as possible. I like how it, how it reacts to the paint. I like how it holds on to it. But we want to make this as easy as we can. And again, let me just focus on getting the border in here. That smoothed in. And, uh, let's get this border down here next to the blue. That's going to be the, the hard perimeter. And a little bit of that white between the blue and the orange. Really just, again, it's one of those things you don't really think about, but it helps to pop the eye. It really just helps to settle these pieces as being separate, and yet they belong together. A little bit of a boundary between them. Uh, for all intents and purposes, this is what I wanted to create, and uh, this, is, this is what I've created. Now again, your results are going to vary, and they should. You should be able to do your own thing. But in this concept, it was really one of how would I, if I were painting a picture of a, of a sculpture, a, an abstract art sculpture that looks something like this, what would it look like? So this is what we've come up with. No right answer. Beautiful thing about abstract art. Um, and we've also been able to do this in a relatively short period of time. Which, again, if you're on a lunch break or just need a little downtime, a little me time, and you want something to help you unstress, this could be an incredibly great way to do that. And at the end, you got something that looks pretty good. Like, yeah, look at that. Right? Who would want to hang that on their wall? Exactly right. Anyway, thank you so much for your time. If you've enjoyed what we've done today, we do this every single week. There's all sorts of stuff coming up. Whether we're talking about paint, we're talking about uh, collage, we're talking about other types of media, all sorts of things that we're going to be doing here. And uh, we'd love to be, have you along for the ride. So hit that subscribe button. Be part of our little family. And uh, guess what? That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much again for dropping by. This is Spider, and I'll see you real soon.